What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on y'all so we are back again <laughs> uh, we're back again for a whole new episode of love after locker this season two episode 13 but it's season three girl girl quit playing like i really want um y'all to change that to season three like what is this because we only got one person from season two that's still on this bitch and we didn't even see her tonight okay we see her next week and I want to know what y'all think Tony doing and where y'all think he at. Where y'all think the uh, surprise going to be that she pop up on his ass with? A nigga? Girl, I don't know what could be more drastic than that. You know, the way that they acting. But um, anyway, this episode was called Menace to Society. Okay, that was a good film. Bitch, don't let them try to remake that too. Because I'm going to be really pissed, alright? But anyway, um... Moving on, let's just get into it, okay? So this episode, we do see our homegirl, Andrea. You know, she look a little bit more better. You know, she got the little bangs. You know, she got the darker hair. Not all that crazy makeup. She look very much to do, like she about to go to church. You know what I'm saying? You know, finna go talk to the deacon and the deaconess, you know? And this is all because she got in contact, her sister got in contact with this detective, um, who actually had some dealings with her fiance, Lamandre, okay? And I know a lot of people was thinking maybe that they was trying to phase out, um, replace Andre and Lamandre's storyline with Glorietta's. You know, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Glorietta, her storyline, I don't understand why they put her in so late as they did. But if you go back, to even when the uh, Love at the Lockup, Life at the Lockup was on and they were showing the preview for what was coming up on this season or the continuation of this season. Um, what it was showing was she was the main girl standing outside with them damn balloons, okay? She was always in the preview, so she was always supposed to come up. But I just don't understand why they put her in so late. But whatever. You know, Andrea, she's going over there to see this guy, this detective, right? That um had, like I said, Dillis Willow Andre in his case and knows it very well. You know, her sister set it up for them to talk. And she basically was like... Hi, Detective Ray. Um, I just want to um, get some information about Lamandre. You know, he told me that he was supposed to be out. But then I get a call saying that he's not getting released. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So what is exactly do you want from me? Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, is it something that happened, like, within prison that he did that probably, you know, um, hindering his stay in there and all that stuff? It was like, basically... You know, he got at least, what, 13 years, 20 years, 13, something like that, 10-something. He been in jail for, what, three, four years or whatever. So, whatever he did, he probably tacked on, like, probably you looking at a good five years or so. Some shit like that. He was just throwing out a lot of numbers. And I was sitting here like, me and Andre was like, um, baby girl, you ready? And you willing to stay around for another five years talking to a jailbird? No, baby. I guess. But then again, he is paying her bills and all this stuff. But see, not one person, not one person, well, his homeboy, not one person has really said, even the homeboy said he got issues, okay? Now, one person has really said that Lamondre is on the up and up, all right? He's a bad dude, you know, he's a menace, he's, you know, bad for the city and all this stuff. This is what director, um, the Detective Ray is saying, okay? He was like, basically, if you was my daughter, I'd tell your ass to run, okay? Not to get involved with this shit, you know? Um, it's, it was a top 10 FBI list or a top 10 list in the prison. He was up top, uh, top five for the, uh, criminals and all that stuff, you know, one that lists and st shit like that. I was like, Ooh, you know, Andrea is sitting there looking like she trying to let it sink in, but you know, she ain't going to let it sink in. She's still going to be on Lamondre's tick, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, girl, Everybody is telling you this. You know this too, okay? Why are you willingly putting yourself through this when you could probably have your baller already outside of jail, okay? You down there in motherfucking Florida where they flock, okay? Bitch, take your ass to Miami for a little bit, okay? South, do they got them in South Beach? Bitch, you know where the baller stay down there. Stop playing. Go to a yacht party. But anyway, you know, that was that with, um... Girl, I got mosquito bites. I'm finna use y'all suggestion when I get finished, girl. That's if you keep on seeing me, cause bitch, it's right there on my motherfucking, right between my ankle and my foot. 
right there on that top. Oh, it's just where the slant ant right here, girl, bitch. Where the slant ant right here, girl, bitch. It's just irritated me. But anyway, that was it with Lavandre. Let's just get on um Vincent and um uh Amber. Okay, now Vincent and Amber is in the car. All right, and so <laughs> here go Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my grandma. <laughs> hey, how you been? Yeah, you know, I'm out here doing a side job. That's what I'm doing. I told you I'd be keeping busy. I'm doing a side job currently. But guess where I'm at? I'm in Atlanta. Who would have thought it? Yeah, grandma. Yeah. Yeah, Mama Sita. Yeah, I believe that. I love you. Okay, mi amore. You know, go ahead. All right, bye. I'm sitting here like me and Amber like, Hmm, we're going to put that in the back of our minds, okay? Because he's dropping her off to the nail spa. You know, she's meeting up with a friend that she knew from the same city. They from the same city, but they never really hung out until they got to jail. I said, ain't that funny how life turns. But anyway, y'all link up, not outside, but inside. And, um... Basically, they send there getting some pedicures, and she started telling her about the stuff that's been going on. She was like, you remember when I was telling you how I was talking to this dude, um, talking on um, meetaprisoner.com or whatever, you know, and an Vincent dude, right? So he hit me up. We conversing. We doing all this stuff. But now, I've been kicking it with him for this past few days since I've been out, and it's just like, I like dude, but it's just awkward as hell, and the awkwardness is making it uncomfortable, and I'm just sitting here like, what is going on? What is going on? Like, I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't know if I'm really feeling it. Like, deep down inside, I said, girl, what your heart is telling you? Your heart is telling you now, okay? That's what it's telling you. Telling you that something ain't right. Um, Miss Friend, Miss Friend was listening to the whole conversation. And then when she told her about the, um, him saying that he got, a, um, a job, he working a side job or something like that, you know, and she like, what job is he working? He ain't working shit. Then when she told him about the adoption, told him about the adoption and all that stuff, girl, mama said he a con, he ain't done, he did this before. Okay, because I don't know what he's trying to do, but he's trying to get some money out of it. Because remember, that was the main reason why he wanted to adopt Amber and Puppy. Okay, so that they can he can get money so he can quote unquote split it with them. All right, but he went on ahead with the adoption with Puppy, but he couldn't get no money because Puppy is still behind bars. You know what I'm saying? And I said, mm. and it was like, what? He trying to get your ass knocked up in the next year or whatever so he can use the baby as a tax write off. I said, he is from Chicago. He do got people from Chicago. <laughs> I was about to say something now. Let me tell you something. I, I, shit. You know y'all got some uncles and some cousins and some aunties or whatever. And some baby daddies that come out the brook work and baby mamas that be like, let me claim the kid for um tax write off. Yes, a dependent so we can get some more money. Okay, not so we can get some more money, so they can get some more money, okay? There you go. Bitch, did something bite me on my goddamn bed? Okay, no, that was just my braid. Girl, I'm 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 Yeah, I'm over summer. Okay, bitch, technically it's fall. I'm over this. Insects go away. God damn. But anyway, listen, I had a flashback real quick. I'm like, damn, bitch, what was that? Okay, that was my, um, that was my life. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Y'all like, shit, bitch. <laughs> yes, I'm back. <laughs> but no, um, that was happening, and she was like, yeah, we're going to have to talk. I said, girl, you're going to have to talk. Okay, what y'all, the talk got to go like this. So, um, Vince, I don't know what your end game is, but my end game is this. I'm done. Okay. Uh, it was chill. Have a good one. All right. He is just weird and creepy. I can, can you imagine waking up to a face like that? And I ain't saying that he ugly or whatever, but his, he's just, he just has this, you know, he kind of like serial killer vibe okay he got that type of vibe like he'll just pop out he do stuff undercover and we don't know exactly what he doing all right he probably got somebody i ain't gonna put that out there that's what he feel like that's what he feel like okay but um we'll see we'll see then we get this whole thing <clears throat> with lizzie and daniel okay lizzie and daniel 
Is his name Daniel? Yes, his name is Daniel. Daniel and Lizzie has been living, or he's been staying with Lizzie. But, you know, for the time being, he's going to go over there and stay with his mother. Okay? He didn't really want to stay at the mom's house because of the tension that's going on between the mother and Lizzie and him at the same time. And the tension that's between him and the mother is because of the way that she feels about Lizzie. Okay? So, he gets into the house. <laughs> He gets into the house and she was like, how does this feel? And he was like, I don't know. You know, I'm, it's a little cramp or something. I don't like it because it's a little cramp. I said, hold up. Sir, you just spent like two years in a fucking 8 by 11 cell. Okay. Or probably 7 by 11. Bitch, I don't know. You just spent two years in a box. And you talking about something, this is cramp? Girl, that's luxury, boy. All right. But, um. <laughs> What is your definition of cramp? Just say you don't want to be there with your mama because your mama a bitch, okay? And that's exactly what it is. But at the same time, I want to say that Teresa is 100% a bitch. But at the same time, I can't do that because I get where she's coming from. She's just delivering things and going about it all the way wrong, all right? You know, Lizzie do come over and I'm going to put both conversations together because then you and her had a conversation. They had a blow up inside the house and then Lizzie comes over and it spilled over because Lizzie is trying to understand why would Teresa put her on blast in front of the family and be talking shit about her. Basically trying to make it seem as if the girl is an alcoholic or whatever, just because she likes to have a couple of drinks here and there, you know, and, um, that's what Daniel was saying. Why do you keep on starting stuff with her? Why do you keep on talking about her? Why do you keep on doing this? Why would you tell the family that or whatever? Why are you trying to make it seem like she's trying to influence me to do stuff? Because mama is having PTSD of her own, okay? But the simple fact that she don't want to see her baby boy go down that same path that he's been going down. He wants. She wants this time to be the one time that he actually, you know... Fixes his life and everything goes straight, okay? And he's on the straight and arrow and all that. And there's no potential for him to go back to jail. There's no temptation. There's no reason or whatever. Because she just can't take it. And that's basically what she was trying to say. <coughs> mm. And, um, you know, she just delivered it all wrong. She it came out in a negative fashion. And, you know, Lizzie was like, Lizzie was cussing at that bitch. I was like, listen, on the one hand, don't cuss at that lady like that because that that's still his mama. You still got to respect, but she don't respect your ass for when, what we see. So I was a little conflicted. Like, call her bitch, but then don't call her bitch. You know what I'm saying? Call her bitch behind her back. But then again, call her bitch to her face because she called you out about being an alcoholic. Basically, that's what she was trying to say. Lizzie was like, Daniel and Lizzie was like, so what? When we got out of jail, I went and got a drink. So the fuck what? It's been three days. So what, bitch? I don't give a fuck. You don't be trying to tell the family like I'm an alcoholic and all that stuff. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Because when Daniel started this stuff and he started on drugs, you know he's a drug addict and all this stuff. And, and, and what mom is trying to say is that Daniel, you, you know, some people move on from one thing to the next thing. And she's trying to make it seem as if, you know, he started off with the alcohol and that's what made him get into drugs, okay? And now that he's not drugs, supposedly, he's probably going to turn his vice into the alcohol and then get addicted to that, you know, because he, you, you're, you're fighting addiction. And so she don't want that to happen. And she feel as though she's a negative influence with that because that's all she do is drink or whatever. And I don't know if that's technically true. That's all she do because mama could be putting a lot on it. You know what I'm saying? To make her exaggerating, to make her look bad because she don't really fuck with Lizzie like that. But at the same time, I get where she's coming from. Okay. Um, it's best that he stay from all of that, you know, because he could slip and do some shit that he didn't, he not supposed to, or he said he wasn't going to do or whatever. But at the same time, you got to let this boy live his life. He's 24 years old. He's a grown ass man. So you can be upset and you can go ahead and put out there. I'm, I'm, I need him to do this. I want him to do this. I want him to do that. That's fine. That's fine. But it's up to him. Like he said, it was the places that he was at when he was start drinking that got him in trouble. It wasn't the liquor itself or the person who gave him the liquor that uh, got him in trouble. It was the place that he was at and the things that he did once he started drinking. I said, to be honest, both is right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, <sighs> deliverance, okay, tone, message, it's all there. But, you know... The, the stuff is fucked up. The message is there, but the stuff is fucked up. And that's why they was able to hug it out for a second. But, you know, of course, Lizzie didn't <laughs> buy that shit. 
Leslie said, come on, Dane, we're going to go to the bar. I said, bitch, that lady just cussed your ass out and called you a motherfucking alcoholic, and you said, let's go to the bar to de-stress. Okay. Okay, you um don't prove mama right, all right, because, you know, mama already don't like the fact that she wasn't there for him when he was in jail. He, she was like, you wrote her like a 14-page letter, and did she even write you anything back? Two years. She ain't never come up there to see you, and what's the excuse? Because it's always been school. It's always been this. Let me tell you something. If people really want to be in your life, they will make time for you, okay? No matter what it is that they're going through, they will make time for you. Baby Lizzie, I want to know the real truth, and I want to know what the secret is that you have not been telling him, because um, Mama Teresa, she knows that you ain't been telling him the truth, and we've been, this is what's been lingering this whole season about you, that you ain't been telling the truth and he don't know all the secrets okay that you've been doing some stuff while he was in jail and my thing of it is why couldn't you um you couldn't take 15 minutes 10 minutes to write a little letter you know Aaliyah did it in four okay she said i'm writing you a four page letter and, and close it with a kiss bitch that's what she did okay in four four minutes you couldn't do that dear daniel I got your letter today, and baby, let me just tell you this. I miss you so much, and everything that you said was so thoughtful. You know, I just I just want to let you know that I really love everything about you. You know, I miss your face. I miss your eyes. I miss your nose. I miss your teeth. I miss your mouth. I miss your lips. I miss your neck. I just want to kiss all on it. You know, I just can't wait to get you in my arms and you to hold me and squeeze me and touch me and do all the things to me that I need you to do, you know, and I can't wait to see you. So please keep your head up, babe. Have a good one. Bye. Love, Lizzie. Bitch, you couldn't do something like that. It wasn't going to take nothing but 10 minutes at the max unless you slow. Okay? And I ain't talking about, I mean, you know, because some people write slow or whatever. I ain't trying to imply nothing else. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, baby, don't. You could have typed that shit up on your motherfucking computer, bitch. While you was in the school library, you could have typed that up and then signed your name. Something about that ain't right. I'm with Teresa on that. Okay, I can understand the time issue, but like I said, if you want to do something for somebody, you will. Okay, but we're gonna get off that bitch for a minute. Let's get on. Um, <laughs> Cheryl and Josh. No, no, yeah, let's do Cheryl and Josh right quick. Cheryl and Josh. Um, Josh comes in to see her while she's at the hotel, and you know. <laughs> She gets on the bed and she was like, oh my God, how did you sleep with that on? Was it difficult? He was like, yeah, I mean, it twists and it turns. I'm looking at the ankle monitor. Now, y'all know what I was thinking of. If you watch Love and Hip Hop uh, Hollywood and you watched it uh, this Monday when uh, Apple Watch Sister said, bitch, let me charge my leg up. That's all I was thinking of when he put that leg up on that damn t- I said, do you need to charge? You need an adapter here. What what time do you say? You take Android. It's an Android adapter, right? Hmm. Or you you, you got a USB P port. <laughs> Bitch, let me stop playing with these people. But you know, they talking about stuff. He needs to get his driver's license and stuff like that. And so he can get a job. And um this whole conversation was annoying me because it felt like Josh was making an excuse, okay? It was making excuses after excuses after excuse, okay? And the main excuse was, I can't get a job if I don't have my driver's license. You have to pay restitution. He owed 84800 some dollars, damn near $85,000 for shit that happened, um, a c- accumulation of stuff that he had happened, you know, damage to cars and stuff when he was 18 or whatever, and then the bank robbery or whatever, you tacking all this stuff on. He owes for that, okay? He owes to state this stuff. And so, um, at this point, you know, they're debating on whether or not he should go ahead. He don't want to start paying on the restitution, which is paying $100 a month. He don't want to start paying on that until he's able to get his driver's license. I said, baby, baby, get start paying this shit so you can get this stuff out because you're going to be paying for this forever, okay? You're going to be paying for this forever. Um, And at this point, it's like you're trying to stall shit out, make excuses for this and make excuses for that. But I get you want to go ahead and work, but you mean to tell me you can't find no other job that don't require you to drive? Bitch, Cheryl can drive you. Bitch, your mama can drive you. Bitch, is there a seat? Uh, 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 it's public transportation. I was about to say CTA because that's what it is out here. Um, uh, is that what it is? Okay, ask your mama to get you an Uber. 
All right, baby, go get you a bicycle and bike to work, bitch. Okay, that's what you can do. So you can stay fit and lean and heart healthy, bitch. Okay, so, you know, there's too many, too many ways to get to work. You don't necessarily need to drive, drive. You know, you behind the wheel and having a license. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got that state ID up to date and it ain't inspired, that's all you need right about now, okay? Unless you're trying to go into a field that, you know, you need a license because you're going to be traveling and all this stuff. But then again, like I said, if you ain't got your license right now, go to a job where you don't really need a license, okay? Quit these goddamn excuses. And then this is what uh, got me fucked up. Cheryl said, I can help pay on your uh, restitution. He said, bitch, I ain't trying to have no woman. I ain't, no, I ain't trying to have no chick pay for my shit. I said, hold up, Cheryl, you got the game fucked up, okay? I want to be on Cheryl's team right about now because Cheryl like doling out money to everybody. You know what I'm saying? This bitch done already spent $30,000 plus on this nigga, okay? You done spent all this money on him and he still owe 85, okay? And plus, if you giving him all this money, how much money is your ch- your kids getting out of your pocket? And I ain't talking about child support from your baby daddies. I'm all oh, baby daddy, baby daddies. I don't know how many you got. I'm talking about from your money, from your pocket. How much time is they getting? Because, baby, you ain't mentioned them motherfuckers since you left them, okay? You ain't said that you brought them this, brought them that, or whatever since that birthday party that you barely paid for, okay? Listen, girl, you got the game fucked up and you got your priorities all wrong, all right? And then... <laughs> He was like, she said, what am I, more interesting to you or whatever when I was in jail, when you was in jail or whatever? He was like, yep, yep. She get pissed off. She said, "Uh uh-uh, all the cameras got to get up out of here because we need to talk. We need to talk, okay? She going outside. Do I that door closed on her? And she was like, so you not coming out? You not coming out? First of all, the door is closed, so you didn't already answer the question. The door answered it for you, okay? And then, you know, he was like, I ain't I ain't trying to argue, you know, your mood swings. I ain't, I ain't here for that stuff. But eventually, they made up, and then he get on top of her. I said, look at all them bones. Now, I'm a big bitch, okay? I'm a big bitch, and I just feel like, no. <laughs> Listen, listen, a bitch getting herself together, but I'm just saying, like, it's like, I would crush her. I would crush her. Can you, Im- no, you can't, and I don't want you to. I was just like, she ain't got no ass. Look at her thigh gap. Bitch, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that, because I don't want nobody to take me apart. But, you know, he did say he used to like them thick them, so, you know, she different. But I was like, Cheryl, Cheryl. Stop tripping and go sleep what's going on with your kids, okay? And then you want to know who actually went to go see their kids this episode? Lacey. Because Shane had gone home to his daddy where he's staying at, you know, and um, Lacey got to go home and confront her daddy, tell him all the stuff that's been going on. But, you know, the daddy still don't know that John, uh, I think, engaged to her or whatever. But she don't want to tell him all of this information, <laughs> And so, you know, she lied. Let me tell you something. Lacey, one thing Lacey can do is lie. Okay? That bitch told that lie about that photo shoot and how it was good. And, you know, they just had me doing, like, different photo shoots and stuff. (laughs) It was really nice. You know, it rained and everything. (laughs) I said, okay. And then they was outside talking. And so she was, like, so, like, scared to tell my dad. What's been going on? And it's like, I don't want to drop the bomb on him just yet. Because I don't know how he's going to react. But um, I just got to tell him. And I'm thinking she about to tell him what she really need to tell him. And then out of the blue, she just goes and say, you know, Marlo, I don't think her dad is her dad. And John may be her father. I said, hold on. Where did this come from? Me and the daddy was like, what? First of all, daddy ain't here for the shits, okay? He ain't here for John. He ain't here for inmates or nothing like that. And he was like, so have you told the little six-year-old? He was like, no. I said, don't tell that baby that yet until it's sure. Okay, he was like, I'm a grown-ass man. But if somebody came up here and told me that my mama won my mama, I feel some type of way. It'll blow my world up. I said, I know. I know. Lacey, you trash, okay? That's you the trashiest person out of this whole thing. Bitch, it's something in my mouth. I got gloss on. And felt like a piece of lash got stuck on the side of my chin. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, it's time to get the fuck up off of here.
ASAP. But now, I said, Lacey, you better get the hell up out of here. Then she finna go down there to see John. Okay, girl, she calling John. Mind you, she been missing his phone calls on purpose and blocking him and all this stuff. And she was like, <clears throat> hey, baby, I'm on my way to come see you. <laughs> he was like, oh, for real? It was like, why you see that? <laughs> Because you've been blocking my calls and all this stuff. But I guess I'll see you when you get here. Oh, baby. Don't be like that. <laughs> I don't know why it's making me laugh. But <laughs> she always sounds like she's about to start a porn. Like, you know how they be like, hey there, Mr. Officer. Let me see your nightstick. <laughs> Tie me up and tie me down. <laughs> no, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Girl, she a mess. She gonna meet John. John was like, when he looked at her, it was up. <laughs> John is over the bullshit. He already know that girl ain't up. Mind you, we found out that the reason why she thought old girl um John was um the baby's uh could be the baby's daddy is because she cheated on her um baby her husband with John around the same time. I said, ain't this about a bitch? So you a chronic ass cheater? You are a pathological cheater, huh? Damn. Then we get this shit with Glorietta. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta get ready. <laughs> Because, you know, Alex was about to get out, bitch. Why y'all ain't tell me? Let me tell you something. I was so mad after I finished doing the review last week when I forgot to put up in there when he was under like, I got a song for you, baby. Glorietta, Glorietta, you are my love and you are the sky and you are my heart. I said, bitch, what? What? <laughs> It. Okay, she was like, "Oh my God, I can't wait! I can't wait! He's about to get out! <laughs> He's about to get out! I gotta get this! I gotta get that! I gotta get this!" Okay, so she gets in the car with all these goddamn balloons, right? The balloons bigger than the goddamn car, okay? And so she gets in there. She was like, "Oh my God, I can't wait! I can't wait! Oh my God, I can't wait! Oh my God. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Look at my makeup! I can't stop crying! Like my makeup is messed up! Look at my..." <laughs> ass together. You too grown for this shit. <laughs> I said, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I said, girl, what makeup? What makeup? She gets out that car. It's nine o'clock. She go in that door. Did you see the way she flung that door open trying to get them balloons up in there? And um, they was like, yeah, he'll be out. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God, there he is, I see you. Ah! I was like, girl, girl, <laughs> she was exhausting. She was like, babe, oh my God, this is the first time that we get to see each other and get to hold each other without a plate glass in between. And I was like, this bitch so ditzy, it don't make no sense. And he just about the same, okay? You know, they perfect for each other at this point. I said, get off my TV. Y'all, I'm about to get the fuck off. That shit made me tired. Bitch, that took my energy. Who cries like that? Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Peace. <laughs>